Okay, so those are the main uh, windows that show up by default uh, when you open up Stata. Other uh, important windows that uh, you deal with when using Stata include the graph editor, the variables manager, the data editor, any help, um, the help window so that you can learn the syntax, and the do file editor. Okay, so let's start with the graph editor. Um, so let's create a histogram of miles per gallon. So the command, one command for histogram is histogram, and then we just type the variable we want, which is miles per gallon, and it'll open up our graph window. And this just allows us to visualize the graph. You can open up other graphs, you can save the graph, you can print the graph. Uh, the other thing just to uh, pay attention to that's useful right from the get-go is the graph editor. So if you click on the graph editor, this opens up, and now you can click on different parts of this uh, uh, graph and change it. So if we don't want, if we don't want the boxes to look this color, we can just double-click on that, and we get this menu. Currently, the color is khaki, so let's say we want to change it to pink. We say OK, and it'll change that color. We can also change the text down here. Right now, it's just miles and miles per gallon, or mileage and miles per gallon. Let's say we didn't want mileage capitalized. We just say OK, and it'll change that. Now, I prefer to uh, manage my graphs through syntax and through the commands. Um, but there are some things that can be easier to do in the graph editor or really, really difficult to do in the, um, with the command language. And so it's sometimes really quite convenient. <clears throat> sometimes quite convenient just to be able to click through those things. Uh, another nice feature of Stata is the variables manager. What the variables manager does is um, it gives you just some information about each of the uh, variables in your data set. So it's a lot like the variables window, except that the, you can then make changes in the variables uh, manager so if you want to change the name of your variable or the label, you can add value labels so you can tell uh, what a zero or one means for a categorical variable that you've used numbers for and those sorts of things. Again, I, I like to use this just to be able to take a quick look at the variables in my data set. Um, for things like labeling and naming variables and other things like that, I prefer to do that again with the command syntax. Um, mostly because then it's easy to replicate, but this can be convenient for um, uh, getting to know a data set and that sort of thing. The next thing we'll look at is the data editor. So if you click on this button up here where it says data editor edit, and this brings up the data set. And there are two views for data editor. You'll see this first one says data editor edit and data editor browse. The data editor edit, which is the one I clicked on, allows you to make changes in the data set. So if you want to enter data this way and that sort of thing, um, you can do it directly in here. If you just want to view the data so that you can't make changes, then you click on the browse one. But it looks just like a spreadsheet, just like Excel or SPSS or any other thing. Uh, variables labeled in red are string variables. Variables labeled in blue are actually numeric variables that have uh, data labels attached to them. So this is this variable tells us whether the car, and the name of the car is listed over here, um, AMC Concord, Buick Century, so on, um, is whether the foreign variable tells us whether that's a domestic or a foreign car. Note that when I click on domestic here, click on this cell, you see that up here it's actually a zero. So it's stored as a zero, but then the zero is labeled as domestic. And down here when we get to foreign, if we click on foreign, you'll see that it changes to a one. So state is storing the uh, foreign cars as a one, but then labeling it as foreign. So again, f labels are used when you have, uh, new, you're using numbers to represent categories. Um, but then you want to you want to label those categories so that you don't have to remember was it zero domestic or one foreign that sort of thing okay um so i usually just keep a data editor open um 
because uh, I like to be able to see the data. And as you make changes to the data, the data editor just automatically uh, updates as you go through it. This data has um, a very comprehensive set of help uh, menus that you can use uh, to help you understand uh, what commands to use. So let's say we, again we want to look we've used this summarize command so we type summarize mpg and we get our summary statistics for uh, miles per gallon. But what if we want to know what uh, what options there are for summarize? Well you can type just in the command window you type help summarize and a help window comes up And this gives you the general uh, options and other things that are available for the summary uh, or summarize command. Um, you'll notice that it says summarize, and then you, uh, there's a var list, and var list just means the variables you want to summarize. If and in are ways of subsetting your data. I'll talk about those at another time. Weights are if you have uh, probability weights in your data set. And then it says comma options. And so, in Stata, all options are um, occur after a comma. So you type the things you want to do, and then you say comma options. So options in the summarize uh, for the summarize procedure are details. So this gives you additional statistics. You can have it um, just report the mean only. You can do you can change the formatting of how things get displayed and so on. There are just lots of different things. So this gives you a feel for what the options are. Um, this shows you how to access the summary statistics through the menus. So you click on the statistics menu and so on all the way through till you get to summary statistics. Then you get a descriptive um, uh, discussion of what the, the command does. Um, this is particularly helpful as you get into more complicated demand or uh, commands. Anyway, this gives more details about the options and then you usually get examples of how to use the command. And then last, you get um, saved results. And I'll get into these another, uh, in another screencast. Um, but this is just the way that Stata stores the results of a, of a, of a particular analysis. And then um, I guess that isn't last. This is your last thing. And these are just uh, uh, commands that are very similar to the one that you're dealing with. So if you go to look for something and it turns out you pull up the wrong command, but it's something that's related. Often the one that you care about will be listed down here at the bottom. One other thing just to say about help, um, if you look up here at the syntax, you'll notice that a bunch of these things are in brackets. And the brackets mean that you've got, um, they're optional things that you can type. So you don't have to um, use the if or in. Um, you actually, with summarize, you don't even have to have a var list. Um, and you don't have to use any of the options. If, if uh, parts of the syntax are not listed in the brackets, then those are things that you have to type in order to make the command work. The other thing to notice is this little underline under the SU. Um, when the command names, um, whatever's underlined, what that's telling you is that you can shorten what you type um, and it'll still work. So you can type SU instead of the whole word summarize um, in order to do the summary statistics. So let's see how that works. And we're going to use the option detail here. So let me close this up. So again, we're going to type summarize MPG and we'll see that it gives us our descriptive statistics. So now let's say we want more detailed statistics. So we type d comma detail after our variable. And now we're going to get more details. So we get our percentages, or excuse me, our percentiles. Um, we get uh, variance and skewness and those sorts of things. So we get all that extra information. And let's just see how the abbreviations work. So instead of typing the word summarize, we type SU, MPG, and then detail. And you'll notice that you get the same result as before. All right, the last thing to, to learn about is the do file editor. Um, I'm going to have a a separate screencast just about do files. Um, but if you click right here, it says new do file editor, it's going to open up a new window. And what a do file is, is a way of um, having, it's a syntax file, it's a way of having uh, your commands saved. 
um, so that you can type in your commands um, and have a record of what you did. Um, and it's a great way to keep things organized and um, as far as I'm concerned is really the only way to do any uh, serious data analysis. So what you're going to do here is, again, let's say we want to summarize the miles per gallon. So in our do file editor, we say summarize mpg. Oops, mpg. Um, so now what we can do, I'm going to extend this out so we can look at this. We're just going to select this. And then we're going to click over here where it says execute um, selection. And it says do afterwards. So we just click on that. You'll see that now um, it's just run whatever command was in our do file um, just directly in the results window, and it's given us the results there. So now we can do lots of, we can run lots of things one after another. So let's say we want to summarize length as well, and let's do our histogram again of MPG. So these are our three commands. We'll, so we want to run these in succession. So we're going to click on this. Notice that uh, each of the summary statistics comes up, and then it does the histogram and prints out that histogram for us. So get to know the do file editor and how to use it. Uh, again, I'll provide more detail at another time um, about some of the keyboard shortcuts and some of the useful features. That's all for this introduction to Stata's interface. I hope you found it useful. Thanks.